Hello folks, Chad Stanton here, a professional woodworker of almost 25 years, sharing my experiences with you. The project that I've been working on is making this little joint stool, and I'm doing it all with hand tools. Now in the last episode, I showed you how to cut out these curves and profiles without using a saw. Uh, if you didn't see that, don't worry about it. I got links to this whole series down below in the description box. But today I wanted to take some time to show you how to lay out and draw these profiles using some geometry. So you're probably saying to yourself, Chad, I don't need to learn how to draw. When I buy a set of plans, all the templates come with it. And you know what? I imagine you're right. I don't know. Because I design and build my own furniture, that means I have to make my own plans. Now, it's true, I do use SketchUp uh, to, to work out designs, but I find with uh, the computer stuff, when you're looking at it on a small piece of paper, and then you actually build it, sometimes the proportions don't look right. So I actually like to um, still draw out full-size plans. And I do this for a couple of reasons. Not only does it really help me look with the actual size, but when I make certain cuts and, and uh, angles in that, I can match my workpiece right up to the plan to make sure it's accurate. So by doing this, that means I have to know how to use the geometry to make these shapes. This is my template that I'm using on the side aprons for the joint stool. Now, to make these shapes, there's several steps involved for doing the geometry. And if you've watched some of my previous geometry videos, then some of this might be a review and you can skip ahead. If you haven't, well, you're in luck because I'm going to break it down all into simple little steps to create this. Now, the first thing that we just want to focus on is uh, let's try and make uh, an arch here. All right. So on my piece of paper, I have a sample line. And in this particular case, for this example, the length of the line doesn't matter. But the first thing I want to do is I want to divide this in half. Now, yes, you could use a ruler to measure this. But if your measurement is kind of like an odd length, uh, that might be kind of a little bit difficult to figure out what the middle of that is by doing the math. So the geometry is very, very simple. In this case, what I have is my compass, and just eyeballing it, I want the compass to be more than halfway. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an, an arc above it and below it. And now I'm going to switch to the other side, do the same thing. And where the two arcs come together, I can now connect those lines and I have my line perfectly divided in half. All right, so the next step is I've done the same thing. I just erased some of these lines here so it doesn't get too uh, confusing and bothersome. And then you'll notice I have a line going across here. Now, I think I measured this distance 5 eighths. But again, this is just a sample, an example we're doing. That distance doesn't really matter. What we're trying to uh, distinguish right now is the, the height of the arc. All right? So now what I want to do is I want to imagine a line going from the center to this point here, to our end. And just like we did before to find the middle, we're going to set our compass up so it's more than halfway. And I'll put in, once again, I'll put an arc on top. I'll put an arc on the bottom. And now I want to move my compass to the top here. Again, make, make the 
arc. Oops. Oops, I missed missed that just a little, so I'll come back over here. All right, once again, I have where the arcs intersect. Make a little dot, and then I'm going to carry this line through to where it meets our middle line. Again, with the compass, at this point, I want to take the compass and I'll set it where it hits on that, that middle arc. And now I'll draw my arch. Perfect. So that showed me how to get my arch between these, these two exact points and to the perfect height of it. With our two examples here, uh, you can start to see how we can now make our shapes. So let's try and, and, and put those steps together and make, make a, a double curve like this, all right? And as you can see, I did it here. I've got a lot of lines and a lot of arcing on it um, because I was just trying to find the middle of the lines. So to take some of that mess out so it's not as confusing, since we've already covered you know, the steps in this example, um, I'm switching over to some graph paper here to give you a, a, a cleaner version of what we did. So uh, what I have here, I have uh, four inches wide. Uh, I found the, the middle of my four inches. So I have two. And then I need to uh, take both of these two inches and divide them in half again, so I have one inch. And I want the, the height of the arc, in this case, to be one inch. So like just like before, um, we're going to take our compass and we're going to you know, divide these lines. And I want to I show you what what would happen here. Just like before, the compass is more than halfway. Arc top and below. Come up to the point. Arc top and below. Uh, I always seem to miss that, so I gotta come back here. We connect the lines. Connect the lines to our middle. Set our compass. Okay, and I'll, I'll do the same procedure to this side. Well, that doesn't look right. This gap we have there, it doesn't, it doesn't flow like the other one. Why is that? Well, here's the reason why. Starting with this line, we wanted our height to be an inch up, correct? Well, what we need to do, instead of from our main line going up an inch, we have to divide that in half. Essentially, what we need to do is, from our main line, we need to come up a half an inch and go down a half an inch, all right? So we still have a full inch in between here. We've just divided it in half. So now what I'm going to do is, instead of, instead of before like starting at the bottom and going up that full inch, we're going to start in the middle and go up. So let's do this.
So I'm starting this arc on that middle line and I'm going to stop in the middle, but I also want to extend, even though I set the distance here, I want to extend this down, down to, I guess, my lower baseline. And same thing, I come over here on this side, same distance, but I'm going to bring it back to that baseline. There you go. Now you can see we have a nice continuous curve going on it. So I hope that makes sense uh, on the distance there. Remember, it's still one inch for both. It's just a half inch above and below our main line, not a full inch above. All right, and let me show you one last little detail that you can do to refine the look of your profiles. So here's two templates. They pretty much look the same. I have the same distance going here. Uh, I have the same height on it. Um, but one looks a little bit more refined, a little bit more elegant to me. And that would, in my opinion, would be this one. Well, why is that? Well, for me, the curve on this one comes back too far. And then it makes the point here on the Cupid's bow uh, it looks like a giant dagger or a fang. It almost, it almost looks deadly. Where you can notice that this curve doesn't come back as far and the point is smaller, a little bit more refined. So how did I do that while keeping the curves and the size all the same? It's one small adjustment. Let me show you again. I know I just said that I made one small change to this next example, but actually I made two small changes, but they still use all the same uh, principles that we were doing before. So here's the previous example. And so I still have uh, four inches going across. But instead of dividing this four inches right in half and then dividing it again, what I did was um, I divided it in two and a half and then one and a half. All right, so that was the first change that I made. Uh, the second change I did was instead of going uh, a half inch above and a half inch below uh, our, our main line, I went three-eighths above and five-eighths below, still giving me that full inch, but you can see it, it drastically changes the shape and the sweep of these curves. But most of all, most of all what I like was uh, on, on the second version as it comes up, I have it stop there at that five-eighths mark and then here comes down that point for the Cupid's bow. And you can see that uh, this is a much smaller, uh, nicer, pleasing angle than this, the previous one that came all the way down that full inch. That looks like a, a dagger or a knife, something that you could, uh, could hurt yourself on. So there you are uh, using geometry. You can really customize these shapes, curves, and sweeps uh, to give you some very interesting features to your next piece of furniture. I really think if you take the time to practice and use geometry, I think you'll find that when you use it, it's really going to elevate your woodworking projects. So I hope you found today's lesson useful. And if you found any of the other videos that I've been doing helpful, I would ask that you could help me out by hitting that thanks tab where you could leave a donation uh, that goes directly to helping me make more content for the show. And if you're not in a position where you're able to donate, that's okay. Uh, you could still really help me out by hitting the like, uh, sharing the video, leaving comments, because all that is information taken in by YouTube that helps my channel. And continuing going forward with the series on the joint stool, uh, I'll be showing you this lower uh, stretcher down here. It has a nice little curved profile. I'll show you how we'll make and shape that out. And then as the video uh, keeps progressing, uh, we'll do some draw boring of the mortise and tenon joints here. And then the top, some finish, 
and she'll be done. So stay tuned for that. Again, it's being all done with just hand tools. Now some other stuff that you can take advantage of. We have a free monthly newsletter where we have contributors from all over the world sharing their knowledge with you. And two, if you're on Facebook, you can join our What Are You Doing group page where you can show off to us and others what you're making in your shop. And as always, if you have a question about a project that you're doing, uh, well, feel free to write me at woodshoppingtime at gmail.com because my whole goal is to make you a better woodworker. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, keep on dancing.